All right, hello everyone. My name is Luis Hernando Sorpresa. I'm currently a junior at Portland State University studying computer science, but enough about me. Let's get into this. All right, so today what I'm gonna be talking about, I'm gonna be talking about servos, specifically um, 180 servos. Continuous servos are a little bit different. It's um, implemented a little different libraries, but at the end of the day, it's the same concept. So we're gonna get started on this. All right, so first I'm gonna import. I need to actually import the hardware for the servo. So I'm gonna do that right now. So as you guys can see, it's right there. So, and then, so this code is gonna be nice and short. This is just to show you guys how to actually just be able to move the servo and I'll be able to use it with the buttons. So that kind of just like gives you guys a better game and better idea. So I hope, I hope it's nice and simple, pretty straightforward. All right, so we're gonna get on the, so first I need to actually declare my a variable and I'm gonna call it, so of a servo type and then I'm gonna call it, I don't know, Mm. Servo test, uh, and then I'm gonna make it null. Okay, and then I need to actually be able to initialize it. So I need it. So this is me actually declaring it, saying like, okay, this is the hardware and stuff. Because right here is just a servo variable, but it actually needs to be able to do something. Servo test is equal to hardware map dot servo dot get and then it's gonna be cool so whatever i put in here that's this is what it's gonna be a show up actually on your like on your controller on your driver's controller and stuff like that so whatever you want to set it up because when you actually define it on the on the driver controller you're actually like type in all oh, servo underscore test so you need to actually name it something so i'm gonna call it servo here and then after i was like can't forget my curly bracket so that's that's pretty much it just for the setup part of it. This is servos are really easy to program because we don't really have to focus about directions and stuff like that. While motors is kind of it's more complicated. Motors motors just have more functionality in a sense than the servo. Alright, so I'm gonna make me I really like to make functions just to make it more simple. So I'm gonna make a public function and then it's gonna be a void text, I'm gonna return anything and then I'm gonna call it Servo mm, move. Okay, so right here the code is gonna go in here is pretty simple. So right here I want to be able to so whenever I press a button on the controller, so I'm gonna make it so that whenever I press A, I could actually move. Whenever I press X, it like it goes in the opposite direction. So I want it so X goes one direction and then A goes in another direction. Okay. So pretty simple, nothing, nothing crazy for this one. Okay, so now we're gonna do if gamepad one because we're trying to program it to the first controller. I know you can program it to many other controllers. So as I said, I'm gonna use X. Oh my God. X. So if it's pressed, it's gonna be true. And then I'm gonna do else if gamepad one dot a. Okay, so now that we have this, so we're gonna call it servo dot test dot set position. So set position is different than set power because set power just put puts a power and just makes it go. Set position is, for example, like so negative negative one would make it go in the opposite direction of the servo, obviously, but that would make it go the whole way. If I just make it go negative zero point five. On the code, it's just gonna make the servo go halfway. It's not. It's not gonna do the full the full 180. So if it's if it's on the left side, let's suppose if it's on this side, and then I only do 0 0.5, it's only gonna do half. However, however, if I do the whole one, the whole negative one, it's gonna do the whole 180. So it seems so. It's different than set power. So obviously we could still use set power and stuff, but set position I feel like it's better because it, servos tend to break really fast you don't want to like exceed them you don't want to like shoot too much power you don't want to force them because they snap very easily the gear inside them are is are very sensitive so for that sense and then we're gonna do servo test dot set position and we're gonna make it go to one mm, okay um, to make it more nice, it's double p 
power is equal to hmm, no nah, we don't need that okay okay so and then obviously right here we just call it and then I would call servo test no not servo servo move okay so right here this is this is all you need just to make the servo move so right here as we see right here I, I import the hardware the servo hardware and then right here I actually initialize it it's like hey I will be using this variable and this is what it is okay and then right here I created a public function that is a, of a void text I'm not returning anything I'm not catching any values I'm not doing anything that's if I was trying to count it see how many times it was being pressed and yes I will return the value back and just continue with my life like that however I'm not doing that so I'm uh so right here what this says is that whenever I press X it's gonna it's as long as I as if I hold it it's gonna do a whole a whole 180 in the in the negative position and then if I press a it's gonna do a whole 180 in the positive position so that's pretty much all there is to servo servos are not really that complicated this is just a smaller tutorial so you guys can see like okay because I know like all a lot of this like many people use many times just looking at videos and be like okay how do I look at this when servos are not complicated to program these, these are really simple really easy to make really easy to program and that's pretty much it so I really hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you guys later thanks